Black Sheep, written by Rachel Harrison and published in September of 2022 by Berkeley, with a snippet read by Richard Coombs. Available for checkout right now at the Alice Pendleton Library. As I stood singing the birthday song for the fifth time that evening, I realized I was wrong for not believing in hell. Hell was the birthday song. Hell was Shorty's. Hell was the green polo shirt, the khakis, the whole stupid fucking uniform. Hell was my life. And the happy Shorty's happy birthday to you, hey! I clapped, and I thought, this must be it. This must be the summit of loathing. I imagined a climber atop Mount Everest, only bitter instead of victorious, grappling with their dissatisfaction with the view. Carrie presented the chocolate lava cake to the kid, and when he blew out the candle, we all applauded and whooped, and I longed to feel what I typically felt, which was numb, instead of what I felt in that moment, which was miserable. The kid's parents kissed his forehead, ruffled his hair. His sister asked meekly if she could try a bite. I observed them as I distributed extra spoons and napkins, and for the first time in a long time, I thought about my family. For the first time in a long time, I missed them. Or, if I'm being honest, which I suppose I should be, it was the first time in a long time that I admitted to myself that I missed them, and how much. In that moment, I surrendered to the tidal pull of family, of blood. My hand found my neck, which was naked, absent the token of my youth, a sometimes coveted but more often resented piece of jewelry. You okay? Carrie asked, ushering me back to the kitchen. Sure, I said unconvincingly. Awesome, yeah, so I was wondering, she said, trailing off, distracted by a stain on her polo. Ah, chocolate. That is chocolate sauce, right? Shit. Wondering what? I asked, checking the window for Table 8's order. Do you think you could cover my section till close? She asked, batting her lashes, flakes of mascara falling to her cheeks like ash. Why would I do that? I said, poking my head into the window to see what the line cooks were up to, suspicious they were once again slacking off. Because I'm asking very nicely, she said, and because you owe me. I owe you. I pick up your shifts all the time. I snorted. When? Last week. I was sick, I said. It wasn't a lie. I was sick. Sick of working. Please, Vess? Why do you need to leave early? I said, sidestepping an overambitious busser who was barely balancing a tray of precariously piled dishes. She picked a waffle fry off of a plate in the window, a plate that was not for table eight. Sean. Sean? I asked, dumbfounded. Really? That guy? You're ditching work for that guy? You're so judgmental. The guy treats you like a travel toothbrush. He'll use you for a week straight, then forget about you for months, I said. And you either don't care or your self-esteem is too low to do anything about it. Either way, the whole thing is messed up. Her jaw hung open for a moment, eyes widened like those of a child discovering something new about the world, something brutal. Your burger was a cow. Moo. I knew this look. I defended her with my honesty. But the truth was the truth, and she needed to hear it from someone. Might as well have been me. She crossed her arms over her chest. Will you take my section or not? I don't really want to be aiding and abetting, but sure, I'll do it. But I swear, if I have to sing that goddamn birthday song one more time, it's game over. Thanks she said, turning on her heel. She paused on her way to the back room, looked over her shoulder at me. You know, you're not pretty enough to get away with being as mean as you are, and you're really pretty. I almost applauded. It wasn't easy to burn me, and she'd straight up smoked my ego. Order up, got eight in the window, yelled one of the line cooks. When I retrieved it, I thanked him, and then I heard him whisper under his breath, You're welcome. Your Highness. There were worse nicknames. Worse insults. 
worse things.